In the fall of 2024, the United States Air Force quietly set a new benchmark. An F-22 Raptor fired Raytheon's AIM-120 AMRAAM, the advanced medium-range air-to-air missile. And while the results were released in 2025, the test itself took place over the Gulf Range Complex near Eglin Air Force Base in Florida. This range spans about 130,000 square miles in the eastern part of Gulf of Mexico, I guess rather the Gulf of America, giving it plenty of airspace for long-range missile testing. This missile was used as an AIM-120 upgraded with what's called F-3R. That stands for Form Fit Function Refresh. In plain language, that's Raytheon's modernization effort for the missile's electronics and internal components while keeping it the same size and shape. So obviously it does have to be retrofitted on the planes and keep being used across a number of air forces. It's all about squeezing more performance out of the same missile body, more reliability, greater range, and improved capability without having to start from scratch. Again, while the details about the distances weren't really forthcoming, Raytheon summed it up this way. The test demonstrated the AMRAAM's extended time of flight capability, proving the munition can significantly increase the lethality of fifth generation aircraft, and for that matter, fourth generation aircraft. They did not publish the specific range. The flight took place over the range complex, again, near Eglin Air Force Base in the fall of 2024. And I wouldn't expect that the Air Force will be releasing the exact distance of that shot. But the milestone shows that even a missile family that has been in service since the early 1990s still has room to grow. And that's important because the AMRAAM isn't going anywhere anytime soon. The AMRAAM has some long legs and some long reach. It's been integrated to 14 different platforms across 43 different nations. And demand is only growing as Raytheon's current production batch, Lot 36, includes more than 1,160 missiles. Production has increased to roughly 1,200 per missile to meet orders that are coming in from all across the globe. The AIM-120 is the backbone of Western Beyond Visual Range or BVR air combat. It gives fighters the ability to engage opponents before they're visible to the eye. The missile is carried by fourth generation jets like the F-15 and the F-16 and newer platforms like the F-22 and F-35. The AIM-120D variant, which I was fortunate enough to shoot in a test shot, is included in the F-3R program. Seeing what the missile is capable of when I shot it, Versus what it is capable of today, I can only imagine how impressive it is, especially when you start getting higher and faster, giving that missile more potential energy before it even leaves the rails. In this world, the threats are ever evolving. China's PL-15 missile is often cited as the long-range counterpart to the AMRAAM. And just recently, this year, Pakistan fired numerous PL-15 missiles at Indian jets, claiming to have taken down at least six of them, with some of them being shot about 200 kilometers away or roughly 120 plus miles. Indian officials actually say that the missile shots occurred even further. Now, it is assumed that this PL-15 is the PL-15E, the export variant that comes from China, so we would expect this to be a dumbed-down version of what the Chinese PL-15 missile is capable of. So the U.S. is on a two-track approach, upgrading the AMRAAM with F-3R to get more out of what we currently have and leverage all the missiles that are currently in use and in production as well as developing the AIM-260, the Joint Advanced Tactical Missile. The AIM-260 is intended to provide an even longer range with overmatched capabilities to counter threats like the PL-15. It's currently not fielded, and so we can imagine that it's going to be a while before we see this in large-scale production and utilization across air forces. So the AMRAAM is going to remain the workhorse. With the AMRAAM, the platform loadouts might vary. For instance, an F-16 in some air-to-air -air configurations might carry six of them, or maybe two of them. The F-22 can carry six of them internally, and right now the F-35 can carry four, with six being scheduled down the road. Missile count, missile carry, that definitely matters when it comes to air combat because multiple shots might be required. It is not a 100% guarantee that the missiles will track, destroy, etc. Multiple factors can go into reducing the probability of kill, the PK of the missile. So having redundancy, accounting for countermeasures, accounting for missile failures, accounting for maneuvering aircraft, these all come into factor and drive the requirement to have as many missiles as possible when you're out in an air-to-air -air engagement. There's also the issue of energy. To maximize the effectiveness and range of these missiles being at high altitude and high speed before launching gives that missile potential energy to reach its target. This is something traditionally the F-35 and F-22 are better at than a fourth generation platform. Increasing the kinematic effects of the AMRAAM is awesome, but to really ensure you get the most out of the missile, it all depends on sensors, data link, weapons count, launch geometry. All of these come combined to really 
improve the effectiveness of the AMRAM or any missile for that fact. This F-22 test underscores the modernization effort. The F-3R program shows the Air Force doesn't want to wait entirely for a new missile to push the envelope. And also not discounting just how capable the AMRAM already is and really what its full potential can be. In the end too, we're probably not gonna be able to produce the quantity at the speed of missiles that we want to replenish the fleet should there ever be a large scale engagement. So having multiple missiles such as the AIM-120 and the AIM-260 leverages a bit of the production line itself. So here's the takeaway. The AMRAM has been a proven missile over the years with a number of kills. This F-22 test just showcases and reinforces the fact that the AMRAM is a capable missile and still has tons of room for growth and reinforces that beyond visual range weapons remain the central component to air dominance. And it highlights the balance of evolutionary upgrades in our existing arsenal plus smart investment in next generation weapons. While distance is obviously a critical component when it comes to this, it's not just about the legs of the missiles, it's about the entire ecosystems from the sensors, the platforms, the data link, the tactics, weapons, performance, capability, weapons working and their capabilities. All this comes together when we're talking about a high-end fight. The United States is showing that even decades old systems that went upgraded can deliver a nasty surprise. And in a world where we're hearing missile shots of well over 120 miles, that surprise matters, that capability matters. Thanks for watching. If you like this type of content, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next video and we'll see you next time.